sweet girl coming to carry me home. Sweet love, sweet cherry. Here's a few reasons why people don't go to church. I can't come to church until I get my life together. Church is how I got my life together. Church is filled with a bunch of hypocrites. And there's always room for one more. All they care about is your money. They care about me, not about my money. Is there some kind of dress code? Yes, the code is wear some clothes. Church, it just makes me nervous. I was nervous at first, and then I felt right at home. I'm not sure I believe everything that you believe. But you can still belong. Church is for wimpy girly men. You want to say that again? If you knew me and what I've done, you wouldn't want me. If you knew me and what I've done, you wouldn't be worried. You can come to my church even if you were brought up Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Jewish, Mormon, Lutheran, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Church of Christ, Southern Baptist, a little bit of everything and a whole lot of nothing. See, it's not about a religion, it's about a relationship. So please, come to my church. Where nobody's perfect. Where beginners are welcome. Where socks are optional, but grace is required. Where forgiveness is offered. Where hope is alive. And where it's okay to not be okay. Really? Good morning. Good morning. I am Pebbles today. You are, and I'm Bam Bam. <laughs> you know, Bam Bam was. Yeah, but he couldn't talk. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> I love you anyway. <laughs> Welcome to worship, y'all. <laughs> We're so happy that you're joining us, whether here in Raleigh or online. And if you are joining us, please let us know where you're worshiping from. Whether it's Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, wherever you are, we welcome you today. Even Selma, North Carolina. Selma, I used to work near there. No comment. On, in the middle school. Wow. Yeah. You were old, but you know. Ever. So let us know where you're worshiping from. And let us also remember this week. Do we have over 55 months? No, that was last that week. That was last week. Okay. I missed where it. Where were you? Well, you know, I'm under 55. You are in the house of the. You might actually be up 55. <laughs> Just barely. <laughs> you know, I'm very disappointed this morning. Why? Now, every week, I give our young folks a mission. 
Mm-hmm. Those young folks didn't listen to me this week. You know how I know? How? Somebody let Polly have caffeine this morning. Whoa! With sugar. This God help us all. This is the full one. Like 73 grams of sugar in this. Lord, how was your week? It was great. How about your week? My week has been fabulous. Excellent. We get a day off tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. Refresh. Yes, we do. I plan to take full advantage of it. I am too. I hope y'all plan to do the same thing. This is an opportunity for self-care. Yes. So what you going to do about it? Take care of yourselves and take care of the ones you love. Love the one you with. Love the one you with. (laughs) Pebbles, you are. I'm, I'm behaving myself. And now, from deep within the St. John's NCCAB booth, here's Mike with today's news and announcement. Happy Labor Day weekend, everybody. This U.S. holiday got started in 1882 with the first parade being held in New York City on September 5th. We owe our thanks to two Irish immigrants for this holiday. While there's a bit of controversy as to who first proposed the idea, either it was Peter McGuire, the General Secretary of the Brotherhood of Carpenters and Joiners and co-founder of the AFL, or Matthew Mugwire, Secretary of the Central Labor Union of New York, suffice it to say that while heads of corporations and big money investors get the limelight, it's the hard work and dedication of millions of workers that truly move progress forward and make a better life for future generations. The Department of Labor has this to say about why we celebrate Labor Day. American labor has raised the nation's standards of living and contributed to the greatest production the world has ever known. And the labor movement has brought us closer to the realization of our traditional ideas of economic and political democracy. So, enjoy the picnics, parades, and day of rest, remembering that you and the work you do every day is valued and important. And now for the rest of the Bee Jesus with Skin On News. Please continue to pray for all those in attendance at the 11th Assembly of the World Council of Churches, including our MCC moderator, Elder Cecilia Eggleston. The conference continues all this week under the theme, Christ's Love Moves the World to Reconciliation and Unity. Here in North Carolina, Pride is not a one-time event, but happens year-round. So here's a look at some of the upcoming celebrations that St. John's community will be involved in. Saturday, September 24th is Durham Pride, brought to us by the LGBTQ Center of Durham. The parade starts at 10.30 a.m. on Duke's East Campus. It's followed by a festival on the Duke East Campus grounds from noon to 4, and a concert from 5 to 8 p.m. at Durham Central Park. St. John's will have a booth at this event and need volunteers. Learn more and sign up to volunteer at stjohnsmcc.org slash events. As part of the Durham Pride activities, Peef Lake Triangle is holding their annual Indie Week ad fundraiser, which publishes a list of the individuals, businesses, and faith communities that support the LGBTQ plus people. Visit pflag.org and click the Sign the Indie Ads button to add your name to the list. The suggested donation is $15. Please include St. John's MCC under organization name so we can be listed together as a unifying force for LGBTQ plus rights and equality. Also on Saturday the 24th, Asheville will be hosting Blue Ridge Pride with a festival and walk for an inclusive Western North Carolina. St. John's is partnering with MCC Sacred Journey to staff a booth at the event. You can learn more and sign up to volunteer at stjohnsmcc.org slash events. And mark your calendar for Eastern North Carolina Pride October 8th. This will be taking place in Kinston, North Carolina. St. John's will have a booth at the festival in Pearson Park and needs your help. Learn more and volunteer at stjohnsmcc.org slash events. Looking for ways to connect with your St. John's MCC family this month? Every Wednesday, our youth prepares and serves meals to the downtown community from 4 to 6 p.m. We also have extended our pantry and community engagement hours to stay open until 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. By doing this, we can provide ready-to-eat meal kits as well as assist people in accessing resources and community care. Come and be part of our community in action, preparing and distributing meals, helping in the pantry, or assisting our friends and neighbors in filling out online forms, accessing services, and 
being a listening ear. Afterwards, we come together with Pastor Vance for an hour of front porch sitting at 7 p.m. This is a great time to relax, pray, have conversation, and reflect on the greatness of God and the world around us. Whether you're two or a hundred or two, you can join in the fun. Come for part or all of the evening activities. For our digital campus family, front porch sitting is live on Zoom every Wednesday. Visit stjohnsmcc.org slash events to join the conversation, as well as see a list of food and supplies needed to make the youth meal service happen every week. To support our youth and meal program, we have launched a Facebook fundraiser for the month of September. Look for posts in the St. John's MCC groups, as well as on the St. John's MCC page, or visit tinyurl.com slash stjmccfoodfundraiser, all one word, to make a donation and share the post to your Facebook friends and family. And mark your calendars now to attend the Fellowship Friday Dinner. This month, it will be on Friday, September 16th at Carolina Barbecue and Garner. You can check out the menu in RSVP at stjohnsmcc.org slash events. We close out this episode of Beat Jesus with Skin On News with a special thank you to our church administrator, Al Williams. While he is always working behind the scenes to keep everything running smooth, this week has been especially challenging. Al has been working tirelessly with our internet service provider, addressing a series of equipment failures and service outages. Thank you, Al. That concludes a week in the life of St. John's MCC and the Be Jesus with Skin On News. I will say a special good morning to Pastor Wanda and to our digital campus ministry this morning as well. Yes, we are so glad you are here. So let us prepare to pray together as Ed leads us in prayer. Good morning, church. If you would go with me to our provider. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Creator, we give you thanks once more for being in your hands. For being community with one another, to be able to share and to grow as one. But even if this is a physical building, we know that the church, your church, is here. In our hearts. So we give you thanks for us to be here and for our community online to be able to share with us, to be present with us, and to experience your love and your grace in everything we do and everything we say. We ask that you would reach out your healing hand this week to those in need, those who have challenges with mental health or substance abuse, our brothers and sisters who live without walls, be with those who are in hospital or recovering and recuperating at home. Touch and heal all as their needs are known through you. And we ask now as we go forward with our day throughout the holiday weekend that you continue to be with us and our families. Keep us safe and guide us always in your way. In your son's name we pray.
They gave us some intro music this morning, didn't they? I think that the other music we were playing was just just fine. Keep on playing a little bit of that if you don't mind, Robbie. Sometimes I think, you know, we, we, we go back to those old songs, and we talked about this earlier today, and we have to be reminded, you know, when life gets so busy, we just don't know where to turn sometimes. 
And as much as you know, some of us have experienced a whole lot of church hurt in our lives, and we ran from, from a lot of that, and we should have. But there's some of them old songs we have to pull out every once in a while because they remind us of what we're rooted into and what God is doing in our lives. And sometimes, you know, this song, it reminds us that, that when things get to going, we can have that little talk with Jesus and it'll be all right. How many of us get to that point in our lives where we just need to pause for a moment and have that little talk with Jesus? Where we stop and maybe you don't you ain't ready to call it Jesus yet. You're just ready to stop and talk to spirit and, and, and connect with something deeper than yourself and say, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where you're taking me. And I don't know how you're gonna get us there. But I have to come to you and say, Here I am. That song says, just a little talk with Jesus will make it right. When you feel the little prayer wheel turning. How many of us ever, have ever felt that little prayer wheel start to turn and when we fall down to our knees and we start saying, Oh God, help me. Hey, y'all ain't hearing me this morning. Because y'all getting kind of quiet, real quiet. And I know y'all ain't used to a, a Pentecostal message every week, and that's okay. And I ain't saying you're getting one today. But I need you to, you know, the lights is dim back there. I can't see all of you. I need you to talk back to me so I know you're hearing. Yeah. Oh, you like my socks. Thank you. Thank you. Folks online, we need to see your comments. How many of you know what it's like to need something and to go to Jesus in prayer, to go to God in prayer? We need that sometimes. And so it's good to go back and sing them old songs. And if I did want to tap into my old Pentecostal roots, I'd start singing for you right now, but I'm going to spare you that trouble. <laughs> yeah, see, they, they're praising because they know they don't want me singing this morning. But just sing that song to yourself and, and, and hear those words as we go through this next few moments and, and, and just think about what it's like to connect with God. Let that song play through your heart when you get to going through this week and you just don't know where to turn. Know that the prayer wheel is turning. Even if you ain't got the strength to turn it, there's a team praying with you and for you. It'll help you get through it. We have another song we sing a lot in here is somebody prayed for me and we hold on to that one because I wouldn't be here today if somebody hadn't have been praying for me. This space wouldn't be here for us to meet this morning if somebody hadn't have been praying for this church and for the folks that were coming. Started 46 years ago, 47 years ago praying. And they've kept praying. So hang on. And we'll get to the sermon here. And, 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 and that cause none of that had, well maybe it did have to do with what we had, but it ain't on my note pages in front of me. Sometimes we just have to pause and breathe it in and let Spirit speak to us and to be present. We talked about that last week. Sometimes we just have to show up and to allow Spirit to speak with us and to us and through us. And we have to be open to hear God in all the people that we meet, in the songs that we sing, in the poems that we read. We have to be open to hear what God is saying to us. So we started out a few, several weeks ago now, we talked, we went through this, this uh, series of an unlikely disciple, and we talked about Peter and, and how many of us are just like that, and how many of us are not what somebody would have considered likely disciples. We talked about wading through the water a couple of weeks ago and, and getting to a place where we let our past get behind us and leaving it there and knowing that God's going to take care of it. And then last week we talked about being present. Not living in the past and not, not living so much in the future that we forget to experience and, and live in the here and now, in the present, and to see what God is doing in our lives. So as we, we, we think through all of that, just so y'all know that that there was some rhyme and reason behind all of this. We didn't do all that by accident. We got here today as we start this new sermon series of Renewed. We went through this process 
to understand what it is that God is doing in our lives, or at least try to get ourselves to a space where we can better understand what it is in our lives. There are those times in our lives when it becomes apparent that God does want to do something new, something different, something that, that, that will take us to a different level, to a deeper level of understanding. Now those changes and that, that, that change can come and coincide with, with the changing of the year and the changing of the seasons. Many of us get all, all hyped up around the end of the year and get ready to make New Year's resolutions. Some of that can come in the way of a physical location change or maybe it just comes in the way of circumstances changing in your lives. But God is interested in doing something new, moving in each of us and moving us to a place that takes us to a place of more meaningful relationship with God. Now, we don't like change. We don't like to, to have things disrupting us. So that can be scary. Hard, and it can be confusing. Either way, either way, we get ourselves to a place if we can recognize the times that God wants to renew us, we can learn how to lean in and allow God to do that work. So today we, we start this, this new series of renewed, a four week series. We're going to talk about uh, renewal of our spirit, renewal of our purpose. Renewal of love and renewal of community. Today we're going to start out with the renewal of our spirit, spirit our spirituality. Getting to the, the root of who we are. Many of you might have heard uh, in many years we've been saying, and, and, and Bishop Barber has been crying out, calling for a revival for the heart of a nation, for the soul of America. This past week you heard the president speak and say, and say that, it, that the soul of America is at stake. I would submit for us this morning that the soul of America is at stake, but our very own soul is where we start. I don't need to worry about your soul, I need to worry about mine. I don't need to worry about your spirit, I need to worry about mine. That, that's where we get started. In my experience... Uh, with, with, with what God does and, and, and how God works, God, when, when God brings about this change, it's a holistic change, this holistic transformation, this holistic renewal. God is in the business of renewal, but it's as, as much for our spiritual being as it is for our physical being. More so from our, our inner being. We're far more than just physical beings. There's a depth to us, a, a soul and a spirit. God desires for our spirit to experience renewal. For our very being, our soul, for our spirit to experience this renewal. Life can be hard. And the trials and the things that we experience and that we face can cause our spirits to become weary. Relational conflict can cause us great sorrow. Financial burdens and woes can be very stressful. How many of you get excited at tax time? Disappointments can be discouraging. Old church hurt can cause our spirit to be sick with grief. Being hindered and, and, and being restricted from being able to be all of who God called and created you to be are ways that our spirit is stifled. All of these things and, and so many more ways that we experience life and circumstances that surround us cause us or have ways of affecting our spiritual being, our, our, our very spirit our spiritual state, if you will. So today we talk about this notion of a renewed spirit. In the Old Testament, King uh, David wrote a psalm in the wake of his actions with Bathsheba. Some of us might remember that. After an affair and he murdered her husband, if you don't know the story. David's spirit was hurting. And it harmed his capacity to connect with God. 
and to develop relationship and continue relationship with God and with others. So in Psalm 51, David cries out for renewal. We hear uh, these words in Psalm 51, 10 through 12. Create in me a clean or a renewed heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Don't cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Maybe some of us can relate to the words that David shares with us here as David is crying out. It's this desperate cry for a renewal. David has, has done these things and is tired of the way things are. He knows that there's something wrong on the inside. His spirit's not settled. He's hurting and he's trying to figure out and he knows that he can go to Jesus and have this little talk. He knows that he can go to God and have this little talk and things will change. So he's crying out for a renewal. He's crying out for a better way. David acknowledges that the state of our spirit has an effect on our connections with God and with the people around us. What David prays for is exactly what we're going to be talking about here in this series. And as we talk about this renewed spirit, David asks for a renewal, for a renewed spirit to be placed within him. The question before us this morning is, do you long for renewal? Are you looking for something new to come and take hold in your life? For circumstances to change? Now there are stories that, that, that talk about these changes in this experienced renewal. But one that we're going to talk about this morning for just a few moments that we find in Luke chapter 19, and it's the story of Zacchaeus. Some of y'all made one of the earliest memories of, of, of Sunday school or vacation Bible school. We sung a little song talking about Zacchaeus. Something about he was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. And he climbed up in a more tree for the Lord he wanted to see it went on. Luke says that he in chapter 19, he entered Jericho and was passing through it, and a man was there named Zacchaeus, and he was the chief tax collector, and he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he couldn't because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to be able to see Jesus because he knew Jesus was getting ready to pass that way. This man, Zacchaeus, is, is described in some pretty significant ways when we read this text. First, he's a chief tax collector, and he's also a Jew. Now, for those of you who, who don't know uh, in terms of what tax collector meant in those days, we think of tax collector now, and there's probably not too many great ideas that come to mind. Okay, uh, think of it 20 times that, what you would think of if they said tax collector's coming to see you. Tax collectors in this time were known to, to be crooks and thieves. They, they were, were out there and, and taking advantage of people, and that's how most of them became rich. So here is Zacchaeus, this, this tax collector, and he probably knew what his reputation was or how people viewed him. And they would have seen him as a sympathizer with Rome, and they would have seen him as a thief. Somebody out there getting rich off of poor people's backs. We probably can think of a few folks that are Zacchaeus, the old Zacchaeus in today's society. Second, Zacchaeus was rich, and that was likely because of him taking advantage of people. Again, Zacchaeus would have been fully aware of, of, of his reputation in the community and of his corrupt heart. Now, what that reminds me of is sometimes we are fully aware of our broken spirit, but we ignore it. Maybe for Zacchaeus, this is the reason that he wanted to go and see Jesus. Maybe it's why he was so desperately looking to, to meet this man named Jesus. The Bible tells us that Zacchaeus was short and that he climbed this tree just to be able to see Jesus which is an extraordinary thing, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. So today I want us to take away three things. For those of you who, who are taking notes mentally or written, or if you're in the app and, and taking notes, 
Three things I want us to, to look at today. Take action. Change is required. And accept grace. And you can use that last one in two different ways. Accept grace. Or accept for grace. Our desire for Jesus, for God, is seen in our action. In the first four verses of this passage, we see a, a key component in experiencing a renewal of spirit. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, and it, it seems simple. He went and climbed this tree, so not, not too big of a deal, we don't think. But I think we, uh, 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 well, yeah, for some of us, but like for me right now in this brace, it'd be really hard to climb a tree. <laughs> We, we overlook that sometimes and how significant this was and, and, and the significance and the power of what Zacchaeus was doing and, and his willingness to do anything that it took to get where Jesus was. He was willing to do anything to get there. I think that's a place that many of us struggle. Far too many of us never develop the desire to see Jesus in our lives. We certainly wouldn't do the hard work that Zacchaeus did to get to a place where we could go and see Jesus. Zacchaeus' spirit was weary. His spirit was yearning for something more. And it moved him to a place where he did anything he had to. Now I think about this, and this is no judgment. This is just something that comes to mind. I think about concert tickets that go on sale and lines that form a day ahead of time and people camp out and stay there waiting to get a ticket because they, you know, so they're going to sell out. Or maybe it's that day after Thanksgiving sale and we line up outside the Best Buy because we want to get one of them television sets that's going to be on sale today. We go to extreme, extreme lengths to get the things we want. So when we think about this idea of, of renewal, of getting a deeper understanding of who we are and what our purpose is, or, or, or have a desire to connect with God on a new level, I, I'll go back to something Pastor Fred often asks us, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to wake up at 4 a.m. And, and run down there in your PJs to the line and sit and waiting? Or are you going to lay in bed and just wait on it to come to you? It takes action for us. We'll get to that one. We have to be willing and have to get to a place where we want it, where we want this transformation in our lives. Would you be willing to do anything in order to have a renewed spirit? Not climbing a tree, but drawing nearer to God through prayer, through good counsel, through honesty with God, through going out and being present with people as we've talked about here recently. Are we willing to take it to the next level? Spending intentional time as we talked about last week with God. When's the last time that we just sat still and said, God, here I am, what are you trying to say to me today? And then we actually pause and sit. When's the last time we've done that? We have to get to a place where we want it. Where we can get into that intentional space. Luke chapter 19 goes on to say, When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he said to Zacchaeus, Hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and he was happy to, to welcome him. And, and all who saw it began, it began to grumble. Some of us laugh because we know what that means, them grumbling folks. Maybe we are them grumbling folks. They saw what was happening. They began to, to grumble and they, they said, He has gone to be a guest at this man's house, this person who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions I'll give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone, anything, I'll pay it back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house. Because he, too, is a son of Abraham. 
for the Son of Humanity came to seek out and to restore. To seek out and to restore. A surprising twist happened in this story as Jesus looks up at Zacchaeus and and he acknowledges him and tells him to come down. And Jesus intends to go to his house and spend time with him. Can you imagine Zacchaeus' excitement? Maybe his fear. This mixture of emotion. Jesus is coming to the house. How many of y'all get all up in, 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 in turmoil when you find out somebody's coming over unexpectedly? Is the, is the dusting done? All the dishes put away? The pillows out on the couch just right? I ain't left nothing hanging in the bathroom that weren't supposed to be hanging out when company's coming over? I don't know. Imagine what this would be like. He's now getting ready to, to play host to Jesus. He, didn't, he just was trying to get a glimpse of him. And Jesus says, no, come on down. We're coming over to your house. Maybe I'll catch some of you at the door as we go to leave and tell you I'm coming over what we're going to have for lunch. Get an example of what Zacchaeus was feeling that day. Can you imagine his excitement, his fear, this mixture of emotions as Jesus is coming and he, he, he's coming wanting to talk and spend time with Zacchaeus. Suddenly this person who is a tax collector, a thief, and, and somebody who was hated by the masses is now hosting Jesus. Think about the person that you, could, you, you, you most dislike, you think has caused harm to people. I ain't got to name names. Y'all can think of a few that just popped in your head. And now you see Jesus coming and spending time with them. Think of the jealousy that might have been there. Well, I've been living my life just right. I ain't missed a Sunday of church in 50 years. I sang in the choir this morning. I did this and I did that. Every chance I get, I I give. Why ain't Jesus coming to my house? This was God's way of saying, no one is too far gone that I won't come to. None of us is too far gone. None of us has done anything that will separate us from the love of God. None of us has done anything that can take God's love away from us. None of us has gone too far that God isn't right there saying, I love you and I am with you. I want you to experience this renewal so you can enjoy life and the gifts and the grace and the the, the things that I am pouring over you. This is God's way of saying it's okay. Everyone was standing there and mumbling about how Jesus was spending time with him. And they missed the most valuable part of that lesson. They missed what God was experiencing, or giving them an opportunity to experience, to see just how God works. That God seeks to, to be with us, especially when we are weak in spirit, especially when our spirit is troubled. Maybe it's encouraging for you this morning. It's encouraging for me today to know that God is coming even for me. That God is chasing after even me. Saying, here I am. Experience this renewal that I have for for you. You are not too far gone. God extends love and grace even to me. Even to you. Whoever you are and wherever you are. Zacchaeus' response to to Jesus wanting to come to the house tells us everything that we need to know about how eager he was to experience this renewal. He did exactly what David did in Psalms 51, and he started crying out to God. Now maybe our hurt, maybe our need for renewal is something that, that we did through our own actions, or actions that we have taken, or maybe it's because of life's traumas that have been imposed upon us, or hurt that was inflicted upon us. Maybe, like we said earlier, it's because of past church hurt. Maybe it's a combination of all of those things that's got our spirit saying it's time for something new. It's time for this renewal. The real question remains the same no matter what. How do we respond? Or as Pastor Fred says, what are we going to do about it? Are we ready to demonstrate our desire for God by taking action and making a change? Making a change. Not, not waiting for a change. Making a change. Renewal requires change. This is my 
second point, and we're going to move quickly now. I ain't going to keep you. Don't, 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 don't say, oh, God wishes through 1.1. 1 .1. I, I know y'all. Renewal requires change. Let me put it this way. Many of us might have heard this old saying, we can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Right? Can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting something new to happen. We get stuck in that cycle sometimes and need to be reminded of that. If we want to experience renewal, something has to change. There's some things that are going to have to, to, to play out a little bit differently. There's some things we're going to have to do differently. We talked about this when we were talking about being present last week. If you want a closer relationship with God, maybe you start with spending some time with God. Maybe if you want a closer relationship with your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your significant other, maybe you start by spending a little intentional time with them and not having the cell phone out the whole time that you're talking to them. If they're using words that big that you've got to Google all the time while you're on the phone, maybe you need to talk about that. Something might have to change. We hear this word, repent quite often, and especially when we look to, to some old traditional ways of, uh, of, of, of preaching. And we got scared. We may, let me put this back. I got scared of that word when I was growing up. I didn't fully understand what it meant, but it scared me. So I, I had to do some soul searching. I had to have a renewal of spirit so I could come to understand exactly what this meant. Th th this Word repent simply means to, to, to turn around, to have a changing of our mind, our heart, and our spirit. To have a, a, a changing of heart. Not, not just saying, I ain't going to do this no more, but actually turning around and not doing it anymore. Right? Taking intentional action not to do it anymore. Some of us know what that, that's like to make some, some false promises. Hugging the toilet bowl the, the morning after and saying, well, you know, I won't never have that to drink again if you just get me through this time. That, yeah, see, y'all talking back to me. Now I can hear y'all hearing me. Y'all connected on a level that we can understand. Zacchaeus promises to give half of all of his possessions. And he promises to pay back four times anything that he's took from somebody. For Zacchaeus, this was an outward sign of an inward transformation that was taking place, a sign of repentance happening in his life, this changing of mind, of heart, and of spirit. For you and for me, it, it might look like something different. We encounter Jesus in this life-changing way, and we ask God to renew us. And it means that our life will never be the same. When we experience this renewal, it means that things won't be the same. How many of us have tried these different diet crazes and fads, and, and as soon as we stop on the kick, then we gain all the weight right back that we tried to get rid of. It, it just went and hide and it packed its bags and said, I'm just waiting on you to call me back home. <laughs> it, yeah, I, I shared it with somebody else for a few moments, and I'm going to pick it back up in a little while when I quit. This is something different. It's a life change that leads to a, a lasting transformation, not something that's going to be here today and gone tomorrow. Something that will forevermore impact our lives. Many of us can think of those moments in our life, in our history. Maybe it's through church or interaction with somebody, or maybe it's something that somebody prayed over us, or, or a preacher that preached over us, or a song that just moves our soul. But it leads to something that, that causes us to, to be different than we were before. We're transformed. We have this spiritual renewal. Either way, repentance, this change, should be followed by evidence. Should be followed by evidence. You see, Zacchaeus' experiences, uh, as he experienced this renewal, and, and, and it, we see this response to Jesus' invitation to come and spend time with him. He experienced a renewal as he took action. Jesus initiates it, but, but Zacchaeus, his renewal takes place because he was obedient. And he was humble. And he responded. He took action. 
He did something. He said, this is the starting point. This is what I'm doing right now. He took action. At the end of the very end of that message, Jesus gives us a glimpse into His mission here on earth. And He says that He has come to seek and restore. To seek and restore. He came to pursue Zacchaeus, a lost tax collector. If He came and, and, and sought out Zacchaeus, don't you think He would seek you out? He came and He sought out Peter and used him to found the church. Don't you think He's looking for you too? If He came and sought out Paul on the Damascus Road and we know that story, well, don't we know that God is still looking for us? Looking for a renewal. Looking to do something new in our lives. I think of this song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. That hymn was written by John Newton. Now John Newton was a former enslaver, someone who uh, enslaved people. Any of us might not have known that. In 19, or 1748, not 19, 1748, Newton was on board of a, a ship that was hauling people that were to be enslaved. And that ship was in bad shape. It was in the midst of this violent storm and it began to fall apart and it was taken on water and one, uh, one of the crew members at least was swept overboard out into the sea. All night long, Newton tried to keep the ship from going under. And he thought about the state of his life. He knew that he had run from God, that he was hurting other people, and that he had made a wreck out of his life. Newton realized that he might die from the storm. Would God still be willing to forgive him, even after all the terrible things he had done? At last, Newton recalled what his mother had taught him from the Bible, that God loves to show mercy even to people who feel they are beyond redemption. Newton asked for God's help for the first time in many years. Newton was fully aware of the wretch, as the song says that he was. He knew where he had come from, and he knew that he was lost. He knew he needed a renewal, and he found the grace of God, the grace that brought renewal to his spirit. And then he penned this song, one of the most famous hymns of all time. God seeks to find us wherever we are, no matter what we've done. No matter how far we feel that we have strayed. Lastly, be transformed by grace. Be transformed by grace. I wonder what keeps us from, from responding to God's willingness to let us experience renewal. I would submit for many of us that it's because we don't believe that we deserve grace. We think we're beyond it. We were told that we were beyond it because of who we are. Because of who we love or because of the color of our skin or because of where we lived. Where we grew up. We're told that we're beyond it. Maybe we don't believe that we deserve grace. The grace of God, hear this if you hear nothing else today, the grace of God cannot be earned. There is nothing that you will ever do that's going to earn that grace for you. And there is nothing, hear this part, there is nothing you will ever do that will separate you from that grace. There is nothing that you have done or that you will do that will separate you from that grace. You have access to that grace wherever you are and whoever you are. Hear that this morning. Know that this morning. It is a free gift Extended to each one of us. None of us was excluded from that grace. None of us was excluded. All we do is receive it. God, here I am. Here I am. I don't know why you're giving me this grace and extending this grace to me, but here I am. 
I don't feel by my standards that I deserve it, but I know you love me and you are beyond my understanding in full, and so I will accept it this morning. Or this afternoon, for our folks who are joining us from South Africa and in Kampala, whatever time it is where you're at, I accept it, God. This grace, this love, and this mercy that you shower over me each and every day. We need to trust God's grace for us. We need to embrace God's grace for us. We need to extend. Here's a challenging part if we thought that accepting it was hard. We need to extend God's grace to others. Don't be the crowd hollering, look at Zacchaeus. Why does he, why does he get to, to, to host Jesus today? Be in the crowd excited for Zacchaeus that he's able to experience this. Be proud of him that he gets to have this experience. Be proud. Lift one another up as we accept God's grace. We seek to have this renewed spirit. Remember that we must take action. Change is required. And that we must accept grace. Probably y'all come on up. I want to invite us to do, to do something a little bit different today. Uh, as Robbie and folks come up, we're going to sing a song. Or y'all going to sing a song. I'm going to just hum along with you. I want to invite us this morning as we, we hear the words of this song. I want to invite us to, to say a very simple prayer this morning. If we are looking for renewal in our lives. And this doesn't matter. It, it, it does not matter if you've been coming to church for 75 years. Or 20 years or 30 years or, or 10 years. Or if you found yourself in church and hearing a message of God for the first time today. This prayer is the same because it is a prayer to 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 ask God to provide for us this renewal and to open our hearts to accept this renewal of our spirit. So if you would, please pray with me as we go to God in prayer. God, fill me with Your Spirit and empower me to live a life that is in line with Your will. Empower me to be and accept all of who You called and created me to be. Thank You for sending Jesus to seek and to restore me even in these moments. I was once lost, but now I am found. Amen. If you're looking for renewal today, know that renewal is available to you and for you. All you have to do is accept it. All you have to do is say, Here I am, God. And say those simple words. As the, the folks sing for us now, this song, I, I love this song because it tells us and reminds us that God is real. That God is there to renew our spirits wherever we are and however we are. It starts out saying, there are some places that I can't go. And there are some things that I may not know. I'm telling you the lyrics too, so you ain't even got to pull that out. <laughs> Y'all get them out. But of this one thing I am sure, that my God is real, for I can feel it in my soul. So stand if you're able, and then get in a worshipful position if you're joining us online, and sing those words this morning. There are some places I can't go, and there are some things that I don't know. But one thing I know for sure that ain't nobody can take from me is that God is real. That my God is real, for I can feel it in my soul. Amen and amen. I am. 
am sure of this one
God, today we bring our gift and all of who we are to this table as an offering to you. Bless these gifts that they may be a blessing to both the giver and to the work that you have called us to do. Amen. In Metropolitan Community Churches, we celebrate an open communion. God does the inviting, and if you are worshiping with us, then you have been invited. So be exactly who you are right now, today. There are no ID checks or bounces here. You can wear what you want to wear, talk the way you talk, love the way you love, celebrate the way you celebrate, be religious or simply curious. You have been and always will be invited. Please gather whatever you have for communion. It can be bread and juice, crackers and soda, rice and water or Mountain Dew. Or if all you have is a hope to feed on and a prayer to drink in, imagine and dream away, for your faith is worth more than gold. Whatever you have is good enough. For Jesus has the ability to take anything we have to offer and make it miraculous. Santo, Santo, Santo. During his last meal before his death, Jesus took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and said to his friends, take, eat, for this is my body broken for you, for forgiveness of all the ways we have harmed the relationships between one another, all of creation, and our relationship to God. Do this in remembrance of me. He then took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his friends and said, Take, drink this, all of you, for this is the cup of the new and everlasting covenant sealed in my blood, which will be shed for you and for the world, a promise of love and life in abundance. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. So as we pause today and join together eating and drinking, let us give thanks for what we have before us as, some, as gifts of God for the people of God. Transformed by Jesus' life, death, and resurrection as the Messiah and Christ, while we recite together the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ is here, Christ will come again. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let's celebrate this feast. Santo, Santo, Santo God of love, we give you thanks once more for this holy meal. Unite us and all your church throughout the world once more, that we may continue Christ's ministry of love and service wherever we are and in whatever we do. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Yeah, yes, ma'am, ma'am. Did you pay attention? Of course I did. I don't believe you. Tell me more. What'd you learn? I learned that we want God to renew us. Sometimes we got to get out of our own way. Really now? Mm-hmm. We hold on to the hurts we experience or our image of ourselves as bad and we just our hands and hearts are so full of that pain and hurt and bitterness that God can't give us anything new because we're holding on to it. I love like, that. I love it. So that means we gotta be honest with ourselves. Yep. That far. That was my biggest takeaway. And this is only week one. Week one. Mind you. Now, I think if we're completely transparent and honest with ourselves, all of us have a little bit of broken spirit. Mm -hmm. It might just be a smidgen, but I think we all have just a little bit of that. And we're just crying out for God to help renew us. But of course, you know what I'm going to say. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? And guess what? Me included. Mm -hmm. Well, as Ben said, we need to worry about ourselves. Because mm -hmm, I can't fix you, God. Bingo. Thank Only God, God I can fix, fix you. you. <laughs> Just saying. At least I know I'm fixable. So am I. <laughs> it might take me a little longer, but guess what? I'm going to get there too. <laughs> That's right. Amen. We all going to get there. <laughs> Amen. But guess what? We will never be perfect. That's right. Not at least on this side of the veil. Not exactly. That's a good thing. Amen to that. Because if we were perfect, I could not stand some of y'all. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, some of us think we're perfect already, but be completely honest. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Amen to that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Amen if we were that. perfect. We will not be sitting in this space. Amen. I'll leave it there. Amen. So obviously we're not, and we need to be here. Absolutely. Amen to that. And there's others who should be sitting here too. So what we're going to do about that piece? We're going to continue to love them, and love, love them, and, and invite, invite them, them, and offer opportunities for them to be a part of, of God's ministry. family. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. You can't, you can't hang in the sycamore tree forever. Amen to that. You never know what's waiting for you down here, too. So, you know. <laughs> well, we got a couple of surprises before we end today. Do tell. Well, one is the lovely Della's birthday today. I know. She's finally 22. I know, right? Finally 22. 22, finally. 26. Something like that. Either way, she's still young. Beautiful. Yes, yeah, she's beautiful, but she's still younger than Vance and I, so. That's right. About a year. <laughs> happy birthday, Nana. Yes, yeah, so we want to say happy birthday. birthday. And we have someone joining us, right? Robbie? Yes. Come on down. Jamar. Come on down, Jamar. Come on, Jamar. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, so my name is Jamar Pino. No, uh, I've been coming to St. John's almost two years now. Um, this past that part. <laughs> so um, this past uh, upcoming uh, Stonewall season. Uh, Stonewall is a kickball, dodgeball, it's an uh, athletic uh, sports organization for the LGBT community and their allies. Um, this uh, recent season, me and my co-captain, uh, we've decided uh, that we would like to start a team that's uh, inclusive as far as like the people of color, uh, because there's not much of that within the sport. So we've decided that we would like to take that initiative, that step to uh, include people that normally wouldn't want to join. So um, and with that, we've had a lot of people who wouldn't necessarily join Stonewall join. Um, 
So, um, and we'd also like to thank St. John's for being one of our community sponsors, uh, where we will have uh, jerseys to wear after our games, uh, which will help, uh, we will hope, help bring more awareness to St. John's so that we can have more people um, come and join. We'd like to thank you all. Thanks, Jamara. So y'all can go support them. Oh, they turned me on too. So yeah. <laughs> so uh, our game's going to start mid-September. Uh, everyone's invited. Um, of course, we'll uh, provide that to uh, Pastor Vance and everyone so that you all can can join. It'll be at the John Chavis Park, which is like five minutes away. So um, yeah. So we would love to have you all if you can can make it. So. Thank you. Just a, a shameless plug for John Chavis Park. That is a wonderful park to go to. <laughs> they have one of the, if not the oldest carousel in the state. I think it's actually older than Pullman Park's carousel. Wow. So it's a wonderful park to be a part of. And I love seeing Stonewall t shirts out in the community. So it's been nice to see St. John's on those t shirts as well. You can go up to them and pat them on the back and say, Good job. Good job. Mm -hmm. So when are you signing up? For what? Oh, you mean play? Uh, yeah. It's kickball, right? Yeah. Oh, I get to throw a ball at somebody's head? See, that's all it took. Are you joining? I can do bowling. No, no, are you joining oh, you, dodgeball? You, see, you're trying to put my face on the ball. See, see, see how you do uh -huh. Bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam. <laughs> I got you. I got you. That's why I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> So, as we prepare to leave today, please rise as you're able to continue a partial worship wherever you are. Don't forget the St. John's app. Yes, to take your notes mm -hmm. and to communicate with us. Take your notes, review your notes, put those notes into action. Yes. So, let us say who we are, whose we are, because, you know, the world's always trying to tell us something different. But we know better. And we know better. So please repeat after me. I am, I am God's beloved. God's beloved. Deeply loved. Deeply loved. Richly gifted. Richly gifted. Highly favored. Highly favored. And abundantly blessed. And abundantly blessed. Now look at a neighbor or two and say, You are. You are. God's beloved. God's beloved. Deeply loved. Deeply loved. Richly gifted. Richly gifted. Highly favored. Highly favored. And abundantly blessed. And abundantly blessed. Now hold out your arms and embrace your neighbor, yourself, and all of creation. We are. We are. God's beloved. God's beloved. Deeply loved. Deeply loved. Richly gifted. Richly gifted. Highly favored. Highly favored. And abundantly blessed. And abundantly blessed. Have a wonderful week. Enjoy this wonderful weather, y'all. Bye.
Ah, sim. Nós somos família. We are family. And we are never alone.